नम पार्वती पत Namaste everyone. I'm once again happy to have you all here for uh, Sri Matta Bhagavatam. So we'll start with the prayer. Om Shuklam Bhardram Vishnu Shashivaranam Chaturbhujam Prasanna Vadanam Dhyaye Sarva Vigno Vishantaye Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmay Sri Guru Venamaha गुरवे सर्वोकाण विजय बहुरोगिना नदीय सर्व विद्या दक्षिणामूर्त नम तेनाड़ी परियवाोट्री एनाटवर्कवाोट्री सर्वज्ञा सर्वज्ञाचरण मायपेरपर्कु महापेवाड़ी ओम जन्मा यदो अन्वयादरदाषु अभिस्वराटतेने ब्रह्म हृदय आदि कवये मुह्यती यूरय तेजो वारी मृदा यदा विनम यसर्गो मृषा दाना स्वेन सदा नरस्तुहक सत्यम परम धीमह मूकं कौति वाचा पंगु लंघयते गिरी यतमह वंदे परमानंदमाधव सो इन दास्ट से वि हव सी इन द रास क्रीड Rasakridai of uh, Krishna. So the Rasakridai part is the very important part, very vital, very uh, important, uh, you know, segment in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. So Sukha Charya also told about how uh, you know Nanda Gopar was saved from the you know clutches of the serpent and uh, uh, about the you know um, how Krishna killed him. uh arishta suran kc and uh, vyoma suran so here today we will start with akrura agamana see kamsan heard that krishna and balaraman krishna and balaraman has killed all the rakshasas there so after hearing from narada about krishna and balaraman you know that you know he now and knows that krishna and balarama are going to kill him krishna is the eighth child and he is the you know he is the child of uh, vasudeva and devaki and he is going to kill him so comes and decided to kill them so what happened he made some strategic ideas cunning ideas and he decided to bring krishna and nandagopar to mathura so he cunningly invited like you know he says that you know some yagam is going to be performed there and the presence of krishna he now he knows about krishna he is krishna is a relative now krishna and balarama are their relative or the relative of kamsan and he now wants them to be there to participate in the yagam but he wants somebody to go and accompany them so he selected akrura akrura is the minister of kamsan akrura is a vridha he is a old person he is an old person and he is also a bhagavata meaning akrura you know he has performed lot of uh, poojas and lot of uh, you know he has kept lot of um, ekadashi vridham and now akrura is going to see lord krishna so akrura was so much delighted so much delighted to see krishna because he now uh, kamsan has asked the akrura to go and invite them go and bring krishna and balarama to mathura so he thought akrura thought himself that uh, see i have done so many poojas i have performed so many i have kept lot of vrtams ekadashi vrtams and now the prayer now the answer for all the prayers have, now you know now i got all the answers i got the answer of all my uh, prayers at last i am going to see lord krishna you know i am going to see and i am i am going to have the darshan of lord krishna so he was in a very much in a hurry to see uh, krishna but kamsan told him anyway you know um, anyway you are going to uh, you know you are going to go but it's an enemy's frontier that you should not go in the night time it's a night time and you should not go see but uh, we should not enter brindavan in the night time so start in the morning akrura you know comes and considered krishna as his enemy but here akrura was very much uh, eager to see lord krishna 
So the whole night uh, was a pralaya ratri for Akrurar. So Gajarya said here, after passing the night in Mathura, Mathura, you know, Mahatma Akrurar, he started his journey in the morning to, you know, to bring Krishna and Balarama to Mathura. So he mounted his chariot and, uh, you know, set off to the, you know, set off for the village um, of Nandagopar. So as he traveled in the road, you know, the great uh, Akrura, the great soul Akrura, he felt tremendous uh, devotion. He felt tremendous devotion for the lotus-eyed uh, uh, Krishna. And he began to consider him as, uh, you know, very, uh, uh, you know, blessed person. Because he thought to himself, um, he, he was thinking that Akrura thought, he thought to himself that, see, what uh, pious deeds have I done? You know, what severe austerities um, undergone? What worship performed? Or charity is given, you know, so that today I am going to see Lord Krishna, you know, since I am only a, you know, basic materialistic person you know, absorbed by, simply by all the sense gratification. You know, I think it's so, it is so difficult, you know, it is as difficult for me to have gotten this opportunity to see the Lord Uttama Sloka, you know, Lord Krishna. But enough of such thoughts. Today, all my sins, all my sinful reactions have been eradicated and my birth has become, I have become so pure my birth has become worthwhile. Since, you know, I'll be offering my uh, prayers, I, I'll be offering my obeisances, my namaskarams to the Supreme Lord here, to the Supreme Lord's lotus feet. That feet, you know, see, indeed, uh, today, Kam King Kamsan has uh, shown me mercy. See, he would have selected somebody else also. But he has shown me so much of mercy by sending me, by selecting me, to see the lotus feet of the Hari. See, that lotus feet, simply by the uh, effulgence of his uh, uh, toe nails, Krishna's toe nails, many souls, you know, many souls in the past have uh, transcended the insurmountable darkness of material existence and achieved liberation. So, upon this lotus feet, only the Lord walks throughout the Brindavan, throughout the Brindavan in throughout the forest, you know, herding the cows with his companions. He has gone throughout the Brindavan. So, surely I am going to see, surely I will see the face of Lord Mukunda, Lord, means Lord Krishna, his curly hairs, his beautiful, attractive cheeks, and the nose, and the smiling uh, uh, glances, and his reddish, uh, you know, uh, beautiful eyes, lotus-like eyes. Then what I will do is I will at once uh, get down from the chariot, from the chariot and bow down to the uh, lotus feet of Krishna and Balarama. And uh, see, when I have fallen, uh, you know, when I, when I have fallen at his feet of Lord Krishna, the Almighty Lord will place his hands on my head. You know, for those who are seeking shelter, for those who are seeking shelter on, you know, in him, the hands removes all the fear, you know, all fear. Having been embraced by the Lord, I will humbly stand before him with bowed, you know, with bowed uh, head and joined palms uh, and he will address me, my dear Akrura. So when he address me as my dear Akrura, then at that time, at that time, Point, you know that very moment my life's purpose will be fulfilled so having he is thinking of all these things what he has to do after going to Brindavan after meeting Lord uh, Krishna what I have to do and he's just you know the video is coming throughout in, in, in his brain the video is you know he is seeing the video having all his thoughts you know Akrura headed to Brindavan Mathura and Brindavan was not so far you know but Akrura started reciting so much of slokams. He was reciting slokams. And the horses, uh, you know, they were all hearing all the slokams and went very, very slow. So he reached the uh, Gokulam or the Brindavan 
only after the sun set, you know, during the sun, when the sun is beginning to set. So when he started to meditate, what happens when he started to meditate or have started to, you know, chant slokams, then the horses began to hear all the slogans and, and it will not move. The horses will stop moving. And after sometimes it will start, you know, moving. So that's how he reached Gokulam only on the, you know, during the sunset. So these horses are not a simple ordinary horses. These horses are from Ramavatar. See, during Ramavatar, only these uh, you know, horses, they carry Rama, Lakshmana and Sita Mai, Sita Devi, you know, along with the Sumatra, you know, and left them to the forest, in the, left them in the forest. At that time, Sumatra, Sumatra is the minister of, um, you know, of Ayodhya. And in that, at that time, the Sumatra, the minister was with them. So in the Krishna Vadaram, the same Sumatra was born as Akrura and with the help of the same horses, brought Krishna to Mathura. So, here what happens increasingly is agitated by ecstasy, you know, at seeing the footprints of, uh, you know, Krishna. He had goosebumps, he had goosebumps and because of this, uh, you know, his uh, pure um, um, love and his eyes filled with the tears, Akrura, you know, jumped down from the chariot and began rolling. And began rolling about among the fruit, footprints, explaining, oh, ah, this is the dust of, uh, you know, our my Lord Krishna. This is the dust from the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. So he started rolling. The whole of Vrindavan, he was rolling and going. He was rolling down and going. So Akrura reached the place where Krishna and Balaraman, they were all, uh, already Krishna knows that Akrura is going to come. So, he was, you know, he was standing near Balaraman, you know, and holding the hands. You know, both of the Krishna and Balarama are holding hands and they were waiting for him to come, for the for Akrura to come. So Akrura, when he was driving his chariot, thought so many things. He was having so many videos going on in his there in his head. But as soon as he saw Krishna, Akrura, you know, he was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed with love. And quickly, what happened? He jumped. Uh, down from the chariot and fell down at the uh, feet of uh, Krishna and Balaraman like a uh, like a rod unconscious. <clears throat> and both the children, you know, sprinkled water on his face and made him to come to conscious. So they went inside. He asked, see, Akrura, he, he doesn't know what to say. At that moment, he doesn't know what to say. Was some, he was in the ecstatic condition. And he went inside the house and there uh, they offered, you know, they did puja as per the religious thing, you know. He has, they, he is an elder. Akrura is an elder, elderly person. So they did all the, you know, in accordance to the scripture and the injunctions, you know, they respectively served him milk and honey. They washed the feet of Akrura. And after that, Akrura told about, you know, Kamsan. He told that Kamsan now knows about you and he wanted to invite you for Danur Yagam. And cunningly wanted to kill you. So Akrura, uh, you know, spoke of, uh, you know, Kamsa's desire to bring Krishna and Balarama to Mathura to, you know, uh, kill them. On the pretext of uh, uh, their seeing their Danur Yagam and engaging in a uh, wrestling match. So Krishna and Balarama laughed loud after hearing all these things. So they went to their father Nandagopar and informed him of uh, Kamsa's uh, order. That is, they want to go to see the, as an invitee, he, they wanted to go to Mathura to see the Danur Yagam and want to kill Kamsa. But the young gopis there in Vrindavanam, was, they were all extremely you know, upset to hear that Krishna and Balrama would be going to Mathura. They said Akrura is not, Akrura did not deserve his name. Akrura. Take the A. You know, he's a, he's a Krura. Since he was so cru cruel, you know, to be taking away that dear Krishna, away from them. But Krishna and Balarama, they started the journey along with Akrura to Mathura. On the way to Mathura, Akrura halted the chariot 
on the bank of Yamuna to drink some water. <clears throat> Akrura saw in the water the four-armed Mahavishnu. That is, he had a beautiful vision of Vaikunda Darsana there and began to pray the Supreme Lord there. So Krishna, Balarama and Akrura, they all reached Mathura late in the afternoon. And uh, there Krishna came upon Kubjai, a young hunchbacked, you know, maid servant of Kamsan. And he, uh, Krishna, you know, turned her into a beautiful young woman. So young Krishna, then what happened? He killed the Kuvalaya Pitam, a dangerous elephant, mad elephant. There of um, mad elephant of Kamsan. And, uh, you know, at dawn, the wrestling, uh, you know, began. The wrestling match began. And the two wrestlers, uh, Mukshigan and Chanuran, began to wrestle. And Ch Chanuran challenged Krishna and Balaraman to wrestle. And um, Krishna wrestled with, uh, you know, Chanuran. And Balaraman wrestled with um, uh, Mukshikan. So Lord Krishna, what happened? He grabbed Chanura's arms and drilled him around several times, you know. And then you know, threw him into the ground, you know, killing him. Killing Chanuran. And Mukshigan also, you know, he was also met the, he also met the uh, similar fate, you know, after being uh, punched, after being struck powerfully by Lord Balaraman's uh, palm. So both the wrestlers, Chanur and Mukshigan, they both died by, you know, they began to vomit blood and fell down dead. Except for Kamsan, you know, everyone uh, cheered Krishna. Everyone cheered Krishna and Balarama. So Kamsan, but Kamsan enraged order to punish Krishna and Balarama severely. So Krishna became furious. At this point, Krishna became so furious when he heard uh, Kamsan uh, uh, speak this way and he instantly, what happened, Krishna, he leapt on to the uh, royal uh, dais where Kamsan was sitting and he grabbed Kamsan by the hair and, you know, hurled him down onto the floor of the wrestling ring and threw himself, you know, threw himself on the top of him so in this way, he Krishna killed Kamsan. So Kamsan also met his death. So because out of fear, Kamsan had always thought of Krishna. So after his death, he gained liberation. You know, he he gained he attained moksha. So come after you know killing Kamsan, Kamsan's eight brothers, they then attacked uh, uh, you know uh, Krishna and Balaraman. And Balarama easily killed them. Krishna and Balarama then, after killing them, uh, they released um, the, you know, their mother and father from that uh, bondage and offered obeisances to them. You know, uh, touching the feet with their heads, Devaki and Vasudeva, you know. Now, uh, knowing Krishna and Balarama, they now know that Krishna and Balarama, they are not only their children. You know, they are, they are the lords of the universe. So, what happened? They instead of embracing the children, they stood, you know, with joined palms. They never talked anything. They just stood like that. And they know now these are not, they are not the, our, our children. They are the Lord. So being apprehensive, uh, they did not even embrace their sons. So then what happened? Swami made Ugrasena as the king and uh, Swami, you know, uh, Lord Krishna, he constructed a city called Dwaraka and he became the Sarveshwaran, Dwaraka Adisan. When Kamsan was killed, his father-in-law, Kamsan's father-in-law, Jarasandhan, he became angry. And Jarasandhan attacked this Madura 17 times. He could not win, but he attacked Madura, Madura 17 times and Lord Krishna defeated Jarasandhan 17 times in battle. And he constructed the city of Dwaraka, so the, within the sea, uh, as a safe, uh, you know, safe haven for Yadavas. And um, they, he brought all the Yadavas there to live in that, uh, you know, uh, Dwaraka. When Krishna came to Mathura, Lord Krishna sent Uddhavar to Vrindavan. To, you know, to relieve the 
distress of Nandagopar, Yashoda and the young uh, gopis there. There, Uddhavar realized, you know, that Lord Krishna is not merely the son of, uh, you know, Yashoda or Nandagopar, but the sons of all the gopas and gopis there, as well as their mother and father. He is everyone's dearest relation there. So, in uh, you know, he, he has he has seen all the gopis and gopas, you know, always speaking about Krishna, their past, present, future, you know, moving and or non-moving. Everything, everything is Krishna there. The gopis, gopas, they talk everything, all yeah, everything Krishna, and he is also seeing the independent Krishna there. So the gopis began to remember the past times, you know, they had enjoyed with Sri Krishna and putting, uh, you know, aside all the uh, ordinary uh, property and in the shyness, they loudly, you know, wept. Uddhava tried to console all the gopis. Uddhava explained, you know, uh, you know, uh, while ordinary persons must perform many, many pious uh, deeds to qualify as servants of the Lord Krishna, you simple gopis, you know, you don't know anything, but are so extremely fortunate that the Lord has favored you with the very highest degree, with the very highest degree of pure devotion for him. You know, gopis asked, how is Krishna now? They chanted Lord Krishna's name as, oh, Govinda, Govinda, you have protected so many times from so many things. You know, please come and destroy our uh, sufferings, you know, Uddhavar said, then pacified all the, uh, you know, gopis that, you know, dispelled um, uh, their pain of separation. Uddhavar then returned to Mathura and described to Lord Krishna about the gopis, uh, uh, you know, devotion, the immense devotion of the gopis and gopas of Brindavan. Then, uh, what happened? Now, after saying all these things, now Sukacharya, told about the blessings of, uh, you know, Muchukunda Chakravati. Muchukunda Chakravati got from Lord Krishna. So at this point, Sukacharya, now he narrated the history of the marriage of Lord Krishna and Rukmani. Now Rukmani Kalyanam is going to take place. See, there was a king named Bhishmakar. He is a very uh, powerful ruler of uh, Vidarbha, Vidarbha Desam. He had five sons and one daughter. One beautiful, loving, beautiful daughter. So, uh, Rukmi, Rukmi was the first son, first born son, followed by uh, Rukmarathan, uh, Rukmabahu, uh, Rukmakesan, and uh, and uh, Rukma Mali. Yeah, Rukma Mali. Then their sister. Their sister was the exalted uh, Rukmini. Rukmini was brought up uh, in a very noble way. So hearing the uh, beauty, hearing the hearing about the beauty, prowess and transcendental character and the opulence of uh, Krishna Mukundar from the Unjivurti Brahmanasam, that is Unjurti Brahmana, that's for visitors from the palace who sang, you know, who, you know, sang his praises. Rukmani decided, uh, Rukmani decided that he would be the, uh, that, that uh, he would be the perfect husband for her. So, that is, there was, uh, it was written, the slogan as, the, it was written as, there was Sadrisham between Rukmani and Krishna. Sadrisham means meaning they had similar qualities and thus they were naturally attracted to each other. King Bhishmakar was a pious person. He was a very pious man and therefore uh, uh, many, many uh, spiritually advanced, uh, you know, persons must have visited the place. So undoubtedly, uh, you know, these saintly persons uh, uh, preached openly about the glories of Lord Krishna there. So Lord Krishna... Lord Krishna, Krishna also know that Rukmani, you know, Rukmani possessed intelligence, auspicious uh, uh, lakshan, lakshan means um, that is a uh, audharyam, means uh, uh, meaning magnanimity, beauty, shilam, 
Shilam meaning proper uh, behavior and all other good qualities. So, Rukmani is described as Sadarsham Bharyam, an ideal wife for Sri Krishna. So, he made up his mind to marry her. So, appropriate time uh, for the marriage came. And Rukmani told uh, that, uh, you know, told about, um, told her mother that she is in love with Krishna and wanted to marry him. So, Rukmani's mom, she told about, you know, Rukmani's wish uh, to her uh, dad. And her dad, means her father, liked the plan. But what happened, the eldest son, Rukmi, he envied the uh, Lord. He, you know, forbade his family members to give his sister to Krishna, although they wanted to do that. Because uh, Rukmini, I mean, Rukmi decided to give uh, Rukmini to Shishupalan. Rukmi told that Krishna belonged to, uh, to a how cowherd family. You know, moreover, he's a thief. He's always a thief. He said, if anyone wants to, um, you know, if anyone wants to give uh, Rukmini to Krishna, then I will get out of this house. I will not be in this house. So, but uh, this king Bhishmakar, he thought that, you know, he did not know what to do and he thought that, you know, the marriage has to go in a smooth way. He doesn't want to become the enemy to his own son. So, he accepted to whatever Rukmi said. Now, Rukmini was aware of this plan. Now, so he deeply upset her. So, she analyzed what to do. So, analyzing the situation, she quickly sent a trustworthy Brahmana to Krishna. That Brahmana, you know, he used to come to the palace frequently. He used to come and he used to, uh, you know, say all about uh, the glories of Krishna and all. So, that Brahmana was none other than Vishwamitra in his previous birth. That is, he played a very key role uh, in separating Harichandran and um, uh, Chandramati in the previous life. So, now he has taken this birth as a Brahmana and he wanted to unite, uh, you know, Rukmani and Krishna. He, he wanted to, in the, in the Krishna Avataram, he plays a key role in Rukmani Kalyana. So, what happened? Mm. Here, uh, Rukmini was thinking that, uh, you know, that, that Brahmana who was trustworthy and uh, immediately uh, he, he was, she was thinking about that Brahmana and that, that Brahmana came. Immediately that Brahmana also came there. So, uh, Rukmini was the, you know, was a king's daughter. She is she's a princess. So, she was so courageous and bold. And, you know, furthermore, she would rather die than love Krishna, you know, than lose Krishna, sorry, than, rather than lose Krishna. So, she wrote a frank, um, you know, explicit letter begging Krishna to come and take her away. So, Rukmini gave the letter uh, to the Brahmana and told him to give it to Krishna. So, he wrote a letter. Uh, at that time, even at that time itself. So, this Brahmana was already done Sita Kalyanam because Vishamitra has done Sita, Sita Kalyanam during Ramayana. Isn't it? So, he is so uh, an auspicious person. So, he went to Krishna and Krishna bowed before him and, and uh, you know, gave him seat to sit and asked about his wellness and uh, then asked about the reason for coming. Or visiting him. The Brahmana told the entire story how Rukmani was feeling and everything and he gave the letter to Krishna. But what happened? Krishna asked this Brahmana uh, to open the letter by himself and read. This is because it will not be nice to you know read a letter sent by an unmarried girl to an unmarried boy. It was that time. So it's not moral. So moreover if, the, if a Sat Brahmana you know, reads the content of the letter sent by Rukmini, then definitely this marriage will happen. It's, it will happen. So, this is a faith. So, Rukmini said in that letter, you know, read by this Brahmana, Hey, Bhuvana Sundara. He addressed Krishna. She addressed Krishna as Bhuvana Sundara. Oh, beauty of the world. You know, beauty of the worlds. Having heard of your qualities, which enter the ears for the ears of those who hear, 
and remove their bodily distress and having also heard of your beauty, which fulfills all the, um, you know, visual desires of those who see, I have, uh, you know, I have, uh, I have, uh, you know, fixed my uh, shameless and shameless mind upon you. Akilartha Labham. Akilartha Labham. She referred him as Achudha. Achudha means immortal. He can't die. See, everyone can ask about, uh, uh, you know, can ask about the horoscope of you. You know, horoscope matching. If there is any problem in the lifeline of the boy or the lifeline of the girl. See, but I am the Anabhayana Mahalakshmi. And you are the Abhyayana Srilapati. So there is no need to see any horoscope matching between us. So you may have a doubt as how she could boldly write a letter to me. Think for a minute, you know. How can I, uh, you know, marry an idiot and spend the rest of my life with him? I have done one apacharam. She, 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 she is pointing in that letter. Like I have done one apacharam, meaning a wrong thing, a wrong thing to you. That is, Rukmani is citing a wrong uh, thing by calling him Narasimha. Narasimha because when he took the Narasimha Avadharam, he was so ferocious. He looked so ferocious. He looked, you know, he has got a lion face and so, so ferocious and all the devas were very scared to go near him. At that time, all the devas, you know, he, they all pleaded to Mahalakshmi and said, please make the Narasimha, uh, you know, to calm down and give peace to everyone. But at that time, Mahalakshmi told, no, 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 I am not going to see his ferocious face. I will not come to him and beg him. No, because he's so ferocious. I will stay here and do meditation and he, I will meditate upon him from here. So that is why in this life, you are punishing me by making me to write a letter to you. See, at that time, you know, at that time, you look so ferocious. But today, but today, you are equal only to yourself. You know, in uh, lineage, in character, in beauty, in knowledge, in youthfulness, um, in wealth and, uh, you know, in, in and influence. See, you delight the minds of all mankind. Naraloka Mano Abhiramam. Naraloka Mano Abhiramam. What aristocratic, you know, what... Uh, Aristocratic, you know, sober-minded and marriageable girl of a good family would not choose you as your husband. I will not be deceived this time. Okay, I will not, I'm not going to be deceived this time. Another meaning of this slogan is, in this Narasimha Naralogam Manobhiramam means, in this Narasimha Avataram, there are 70,000 soldiers. But in spite of it, this Narasimha came out from a pillar and killed Hiranyakashipu. So you can't say that because of the tight security, I can't, I can't come to your place. I can't take you away. So you can, you can, you know, justify all those things by giving lame excuses. I have done one more thing, and she's pointing out that I have done one more uh, wrong thing during the uh, apacharam during Rama avatar. What did what happened when Rama and Sita were alone chatting? Rama said, I belong to Surya Vamshi. I am a Surya Vamshi. I, am a, I belong to Surya Vamsha. And so I am so great. Sita said, I am. I belong to Chandra Vamsha. So I am also great. Rama said, I stayed for 12 months in the womb of my mother. But you don't have even a mother. Because you come from the earth, dug by uh, Janakar. And everyone is asking about my mother-in-law. I'm sure so ashamed, ashamed. I don't know what to say. But Sita at once, uh, she, uh, Sita told them that don't talk nonsense, okay? Stop talking. You know, birth and death are happening because of sins. You know, because of papam. It's considered as papam. You say that you even stayed, uh, you know, two more months, uh, you know, uh, more than 10 months in the womb of your mother. And this itself shows that who is great. And moreover, my father never came to your house and begged to marry me. 
you only came broke the bow and married me now see who is great here at this point swami felt ashamed and that is why he made swami means uh, the same vishwamitra to act as a messenger so the rukmini wrote so many shlokams more shlokams and uh, you know at last uh, told uh, if you are not marrying me this time what will happen is i will take more and more more and more birth you know janmam and every in every birth i will meditate upon you and i will try to marry you and if you are not marrying me then i am going to die and then i am going to take another birth and i will seek you again so i surrender myself to you please come swiftly o almighty one you know and make me your wife let shishupala no never touch that uh, hero's portion okay thus uh, the brahmana uh, you know he read the whole letter to krishna and krishna said okay rukmani is having tapam only in the morning but i am having tapam the whole day and night i am having tapam i want to meet rukmani and marry her so hearing this the brahmana felt very happy so happy he said that i want to convey this message to rukmani immediately but uh, krishna said you have come here uh, to talk about the marriage and you should not go like this i will not i will never allow you to go like this because he is a very injured brahmana so he gave lot of new clothes you know he gave new clothes put chandanam and the style the way the brahmana you know walked to rukmini itself became different meanwhile here what happened uh in the uh, uh, in that uh, thing the shishubalan who is the mople also he he has arrived there and shishubalan's uh, supporters also arrived like all the shalvan jarasandan dantavakran uh, poundrangan all thousand other kings you know have assembled there for the marriage now princess rukmini you know he awaited the arrival of krishna but when she did not see the even the brahmana return she thought as you know she thought um, uh, okay alas my you know wedding is to take place when the night ends and how unlucky i am you know the, this uh, uh, lotus eyed krishna you know does not come he did not want i don't know why but even the brahmana the messenger you know the brahmana he has not returned perhaps the lord uh, you know saw something uh, you know uh, contemptible means uh, means worthless or you know uh, something he disliked me something dislike in me and therefore he has not come to take my hand so i am extremely unfortunate even uh, you know the devi amba you know gauri or sati or girija you know has uh, turned against me so as the uh, you know bride thus uh, you know awaited the arrival of uh, krishna govinda there she felt a twitch she felt a, a twitch in her left thigh arm and eyes you know this was a sign of something uh, desirable would happen something good would happen you know just then the brahmana he came the brahmana is coming brahmana he came to see rukmini rukmini noted the brahmana's you know joyful face his style of walking the way he has dressed up you know she could interpret the symptoms on in in inquired from him with a pure smile you know the brahmana announced uh, to her the arrival already krishna has arrived arrival of lord uh, krishna and uh, you know and relayed the lord's uh, promise to marry him my marry her so rukmini was overjoyed she was overjoyed to hear the news from the brahmana and she doesn't know in return she has to give something she's you know uh she was overjoyed so she want to give something she doesn't have anything with her and so what happened she just bowed down to him that is sakshat mahalakshmi she bowed down to the brahmana swami here along with balaramar came to came there to the vidarbha desam to witness rukmini's wedding means as a, as a guest he has come there so the king bishmagar you know upon hearing that krishna and balarama has come to witness her his uh, daughter's wedding he uh, went there he greeted him 
with abundant you know offerings and he greeted him and he gave a separate palace to stay for krishna and balarama here rukmini you know as a formality she went to the temple to do durga bhoje uh, to to the deity bhavani so she was accompanied by her mother and all her friends and she was protected uh, you know by the king's uh, uh, all the valian soldiers uh, all around there surrounded uh, uh, rukmini and all the mridangam scounts shells some horns and other instruments you know resounded and behind the bride followed thousands of uh, uh, you know prominent uh, courtesan co courtesans uh, you know bearing various offerings and um, presents uh, gifts there were also you know a lot of brahmanas you know reciting prayers and a lot of professional singers musicians and heralds upon reaching the goddess you know temple rukmini first you know uh, washed her uh, you know feet and prayed oh mother ambika may lord krishna become my husband please grant this you know uh, this wish rukmini appeared as enchanting you know as the lord's uh, you know illusory potency who enchants even the uh, you know even the sober and uh, you know grave thus the kings there who gazed upon her exquisite you know beauty her lovely face her eyes the reflecting um, glow of her lips you know as she walked with the uh, with the motions of the royal swan she was walking like a swan the effulgence of his ting you know tingling ankle uh, bells you know beautified her feet you know seeing her uh, the kings there uh, saw her you know broad uh, uh, smile in her face and shy glance and they become uh, what to say they become uh, stupefied they become stupefied dropped their weapons and fell unconscious to the ground from the elephants and from the horses or from the chariots they all fell down unconscious because for beauty seeing their beauty seeing rukmini's beauty mahalakshmi is it rukmini displayed the beauty of for krishna alone slowly she advanced you know she was waiting the arrival of krishna and with her you know finger and uh, nails you know of her left hand you know she pushed pushed the some some strands of uh, her hair away from her uh, face and shyly looked upon them you know uh, looked from the corners of her eyes at the king standing before her she was searching krishna at that moment she saw krishna then while his enemies looked on the lord what happened the lord seized the princess uh, you know who was eager to mount the chariot mount his chariot so lifting the princess onto his chariot you know who's the chariot has the flag of garuda lord mukundan means lord krishna drove back the you know uh, uh, circle of kings with balaram in the lead you know balaram in the lead he slowly uh, you know excited like a lion a uh, lion removing the you know removing his uh, prey from the midst of jackals the, so the king's amicable you know the the king's amical you know eh, sorry enemical of uh, the king's enemical of the lord headed by jarasandhan you know could not tolerate this humiliating defeat they can't tolerate that so but lord krishna what happened he defeated all the opposing kings after kidnapping you know rukmini with the help of balaram so lord krishna disfigured uh, rukmini's face also rukmini is a elder brother of uh, rukmini so he disfigured the uh, rukmini's um, you know face and he cut the um, hair and lord balaram and lord krishna then began to annihilate the opposing army with arrows so the enemy kings headed by uh, jarasandhan all the enemies headed by jarasandhan they Uh, retreated after suffering the destruction of their armies at the hands of uh, yadavas so but kalan was not in the scene because he never came because he was a mapile he was a groom so he was told that uh, now he was told that lord krishna kidnapped rukmini 
the wonderful scene is from Jarasandhan giving Vedanta Upadesam to Shishubala. He was consoling Shishubala. Jarasandhan gave Vedanta Upadesam. Like, you know, he told happiness and distress are never permanent and or the control or under the control of the Lord. So he said so many instances from his own life also. Consoled, you know, consoled him, consoled Shishupalan and consoled in this way Shishupalan, uh, you know, took his followers and returned back to his kingdom. So thus, you know, defeating all the opposing kings, the Lord, the Supreme God, you know, brought the daughter of uh, Bhishmakar to his capital and married according to the religious, um, according to the Vedic injunctions. Dwaraka citizens, you know, they were all overjoyed to see Krishna. So Krishna is the lord of all the opulences, you know, united with Rukmani. Rukmani is the goddess of fortune. So, now the Rukmani Kalyanam took place at Dwaraka with the permission of uh, Bhishmakar now. So, thus Sukacharya, you know, elaborated, elaborated or narrated uh, uh, Rukmani Kalyanam. Which gives, you know, this Rukmani Kalyanam gives Mangalam, gives the auspicious things to our family. It's going to give auspicious things to our family, to everyone who hear the narration of this Rukmani Kalyanam. So this is going to be very, very auspicious uh, uh, moment. The Rukmani Kalyanam is going to be very auspicious moment to all of us. After narrating the Rukmani's Kalyanam, you know, Rukmani Kalyanam, Sukacharya also narrated the marriage of Ashta Lakshmigal. Ashta Lakshmigal with Lord Krishna. Rukmani, Rukmani, Satya Bhama, Jambavati, Kalindi, Mitravindya, Satya, Bhadra, and Lakshmana. So, Lord, you know, uh, Krishna, you know, married all the Ashta Lakshmis and he recovered the Shamantaka Mani, Chali, the false accusations against him. And married the daughters of, you know, um, Jambavan and um, who is Jambavati and, you know, the daughter of Satrajit, who is Satyabhama. So, he narrated all the, you know, joking story, joking words and arguments and dialogues between Lord Krishna and Rukmani. So, Sukacharya narrated this Vivaham, this Vivaham of Ashtalakshmihal Vivagam and Rukmani Vivaham. And today we will start with this. This is Rukmani Kalyanam and we will continue in the next session. So I will close this session with Rukmani Kalyanam. Rukmani Kalyanam is the auspicious uh, uh, Kalyanam and uh, this Rukmani Kalyanam will bring all the, all the auspiciousness, all the, you know, prosperity, all the happiness to our home. So I will close this session with this. Purnamadam. Om Purnamadam Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachati. Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishati Om Shanti 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 Thank you.